Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. We are now in Fingorge National Park, which is possibly one of the most beautiful national parks that we've seen so far on our travels. We've just done a little four draft track, we've got some birds flying over us. We Pterodactyls. Are, <laughs> we are right now on a stunning walk in the Palm Valley area. And yeah, we can't wait to check it out more in the coming days. We want to take you along exploring this really underrated national park. Yes, yeah, so, so far Central Australia and the Northern Territory is absolutely beautiful. So much more than we thought it would be. So behind us are basically remnants of when the dinosaurs were roaming around in Australia when the whole place was rainforest. And these are called a red cabbage palm. <laughs> yeah, very random. And they only appear in this two kilometer stretch of this exact gorge here because there's permanent water year round and it's protected Beautiful. from flash flooding. And they, it looks like we're in some sort of prehistoric world. We're really, really chuffed. It's amazing. So we're gonna carry on our little walk for the day, which I think is about five kilometers. And then we're gonna carry on. just incredible that every single cabbage palm tree has this backdrop of just beautiful red rock that you don't see anywhere else other than kind of in central Australia here. It's really nice. The only place that we actually seen palm trees in our travels in Australia was in the Kimberley around the Punilu National Park, the Bongo Bongo, which is quite a similar vibe. But this, we, we both think that this is actually even more spectacular. Just a remoteness, like how hard it is to get here. Yeah, it was actually, the four drive track was full on. Yeah. Like you, it said high clearance four drive required, but they were not joking. Yeah. There was some, a lot of people parked actually and turned around. walked for kilometers to get here or turned around. Yeah, and it's, it's cool because you don't see it that often nowadays in Australia. Everything is now starting to be paved mm -hmm. and easily accessible so that it can be monetized. And they haven't done that here at all, which is it's nice to see. It's one awesome thing about the MOG is that we can kind of park up and well, we can no get trees. to these places. Yeah, <laughs> so good. draft track are just amazing. Such anything on this part of the national park, there's not really any bush camping, there's just like a normal paid campground. But luckily there are actually two four draft tracks around here and one of them you can actually free camp along the dry river bed and it's a bit more like our style of camping so that's where we're heading now. We visited more the touristy kind of area, but that was so worth it. We're so glad we went there. It's still like a long deep, it was 22 kilometers to go there, but that was definitely worth it. So yeah, now we're heading out and we're heading to the next four drop track. How about that for an afternoon view, eh? Just to cap the day off very nicely. So beautiful. We've got surrounded by those huge cliffs, the water. It's pretty. There's lots of fish um, swimming around in here, little ones. All the water holes we've been to up until now, the 
banks of all of like either the rivers or the billabongs have just been filled with dead fish which has been really strange but there have yeah. been a few signs around to say it's a completely natural process mm -hmm. and in the winter the uh there's like a parasite that invades the fish's gills and then they run out of oxygen and die and then the cycle repeats every year which is a bit morbid but uh this seems to be much healthier through yeah. here because the water is so cold as well it's crazy it's so cold i don't think we'll be going for a swim even though it looks quite inviting <laughs> Yes, we're having a little ginger beer right now. I mean, Chris is having a ginger beer. And my colleague won the cream of the cream, the Bundaberg, which if you haven't tried, is the best one. I'm having the cheap version of it, which is just soda water and ginger cordial. It's the best way mm. to have it. A little bit less sugar, make it as well a bit cheaper, and it lasts a much longer as well. So a little tip when you go in the bush and you want ginger beer every day. You can't go past a good old Bundaberg <laughs> ginger beer. Mm. What an incredible, beautiful, but cold morning. Oh my God, it's so cold. But so worth it getting up so early to, you know, witness that first hour of the sunrise. It's just the most magical hour. Just so many birds here. So stunning. The light as well. So this morning we woke up at 6 a.m. We wake up at 6 a.m. every single morning. Just because we go to bed quite early, like just before 10. So we don't want to sleep for 10 hours or anything, 8 hours is more than enough for us and like every morning we obviously make our bed, we put it up so it's not on the way during the day and we can just use the lounge couch area. Then like every single morning Chris makes a warm drink so he gets a chai latte, he makes a coffee for me. I'm still having coffee because I bought like a huge bag not a long time ago so I need to get for it and then I'll go back to having a tea. And then if we have internet, sometimes we watch one YouTube video just with our drink. If we don't have internet, we may listen to like an audiobook or an audible or just have like a little chat about what is our plan for the day, kind of like plan ahead. Some mornings we just drive straight away after so that we can capture the sunrise light. But mornings like today, we just wanted to, you know, spend a bit more time here because it's so beautiful. So that's what we did. We had breakfast outside, just delicious, my favorite sourdough bread with some avocado and two eggs best way to start a day and in the distance we spotted some wild horse it's a really really special place this Finn Gorge National Park I highly recommend you come here to see it yourself so yeah we're just gonna stay a little bit longer and then we're gonna continue on the four drive track we just camped at the start of it we didn't want to drive too much yesterday so I can't wait to see what's next for today
This is insane. What a spot. We're on a track that goes to a place called Boggy Hole in the Fink Gorge National Park. And it is spectacular. Sun's starting to really warm up. We're surrounded by red cliffs and these beautiful river gums. Just this long, winding, dry riverbed that we're just meandering along. It's just awesome. Completely free. This isn't even a national park, so you can collect firewood in here, but we've got enough. Not a soul in sight. So, so cool. We're going to carry on. wanted to stop and show you something. Check this out. That's like 12 to 15 feet off the ground up this tree. That's floodwater damage. All the way up there. We thought it was a monster bird's nest for a sec. Goes to show when this floods which, by the way, for anyone concerned about us camping in a riverbed, these are known camping spots. This is like encouraged by national parks. You just, it gets shut at certain times of year when it's flood season. No chance of it flooding. So um, it's, it's the dry season now. Um, but when it does, oh my gosh, it must be absolutely phenomenal. How peaceful is this lunch spot? A little bit of wind, but still a beautiful day. We asked recently on a video what you wanted to see more of, and a lot of female viewers, especially because I was directed towards female, wanted to see a bit more of what we eat, and I've always thought it was quite boring, and I never eat the same every day. Chris is quite a more like a creator of habit for that. He eats the same breakfast, lunch, and likes the same dinners, whereas I need to have some diversity of food, otherwise I just get bored of it. So I always try to switch it up a little bit. So I'll just show you like today's lunch. So we've got a kind of like a little taste of a whole kind of little thing. We've got some turkey breast, some rockets, some tomato, some hummus, a veggie burger, and some mandarin. So the way I kind of like put my plate together as I try to think obviously of the three main uh, macronutrients so carbs, fats, protein. So with the veggie burger we already have 10 grams of protein. I've added just a little bit more with the turkey breast and the hummus. The hummus as well my main source of fats with the tahini inside and the olive oil so a really good source of fats and then I always try to have as well some fruit and veg throughout the day. So that is kind of like what I want with my plate. I like lots of yeah, diversity, vitamins, fiber, all the goodness to keep a healthy lifestyle.
tight. Bloody tight and narrow. Too far. So we've been going for about three hours since we last spoke to you. It's been a full on track and the terrain just keeps changing, which is nice. We're now starting to get a bit over it. We want to make camp, but we're still a little way off. Have a go at this. Parked up on this beautiful beach right below this incredible red rock formation and nice beautiful running water. It's awesome. Just made myself a chai latte. Don't ask me why, they taste bloody good though. And I'm going to open my budja mix. If you've ever seen budja, get the ancient grain twists. They're really good, especially when they're half price. I think I got that from Woolies. And she just, uh, I just made her a tea and she's just making some toast now. So she'll come out in a sec. We'll probably have a fire tonight, I think. There is a little bit of a breeze in the air. Hopefully that doesn't get worse. It'll make the fire a bit annoying. I cannot rate highly enough that boggy hole track. That was by far one of my favorite tracks that I've done in Australia. If you were in the area and you didn't want to tackle the whole of the Simpson Desert on your own, there are actually sections of the Boggy Hole track that are a lot like the Simpson, but at times even more beautiful because you had this red rock in the background, which you didn't get in the Simpson. There was one dune that we counted, so not so many dunes, but if you're after an awesome outback forward driving touring experience, do the Boggy Hole track. That was wicked. We both feeling so relaxed right now. How good is it? The sand feels so good on the feet. I miss the feeling mm. of being on the beach. Mm. Oh. And it's warm. Oh, it's so perfect. When there's no breeze, it's mm. super warm. So we've actually made a decision. Tomorrow, we're going to spend the entire day here and Yay. stay here for two nights. Because we don't often do that and that's a bit of a shame, and Chris is right. We're not gonna find spots like this very often in the rest of the of the state. I mean, maybe, but no, we really like it. So we'll definitely stay another day. We can enjoy it from sunrise to sunset tomorrow. Yeah, this ticks all the boxes. Yeah. Solitude, incredible nature views. Mm. Those are the two boxes. <laughs> So today we actually driven 55 kilometers off road, which doesn't seem a lot like that, but it was quite a long and towards the entiring day. And there's still 55 kilometers more to finish the track. It might be easier driving, we're not too sure yet of the mm. conditions. So that's why we just chosen to stay here a bit longer and we can tackle that the day after tomorrow. I think that's a wise decision. Very wise decision. This beach is begging for a workout and some sunbathing. Tomorrow, that's the yeah. plan. <laughs> that didn't want to break. Especially not for camera. <laughs> <laughs> that works. It does. Definitely better than it was. <laughs> I 
we'll heat them up nicely so that they'll burn quicker. That is a wild dingo. Let's come up to say hi and check us out. So we are really remote here, so we probably don't actually see people very often. That is so cool. It's basically like a small wild dog. That's ginger. And they are native to Australia. They get a very bad rap here because they can kill livestock. So often in many parts of Australia, they've been hunted out to extinction to the point where the government will actually label them as wild dogs. They're actually dingoes. And they are an awesome creature. That is special. That was actually crazy. That's cool. He did like a proper calling to his mates, I guess, like the pack. Usually they do travel in a group. Usually a big pack and uh, one of them responded down that way. Yeah. <laughs> so Chris was like, just be aware if a huge pack arrives, we may need to retreat, but we are safe. we're good. <laughs> he just left, yeah. That was so bizarre. Looked over the corner and gone. I would say as soon as I get my steak out, he'll be back. <laughs> Alright, All right, so in there we've got two sweet potato cooking. Put them a little bit in advance because they take a bit longer than everything else. All right, so it's almost dusk. Tonight I've got steak again. Angie's got some sweet potato going on, so I'm gonna have that as a side as well. So T-bone steaks, I'm cooking one for tomorrow for lunch as well. I'll probably have a steak sanger. And I'm trying the Osbry travel braai, but this time standing it up rather than having it on top. And that's so that we can keep this fire going because it is getting cold now. So that way I don't have to make sure that it's only coals. Keep the fire going and I can have this upright and hopefully it'll cook fine. And me tonight, I'm having a vegetarian dinner. So with the roasted sweet potato, I made a little guacamole, very simple. And like a little salsa with some corn, some capsicum, some tomatoes, some black beans, and just like a nice little smoked paprika and lime sauce. So that should be very nice. Hope you enjoyed the episode guys. Next week we've got full kind of day in the life at this incredible spot where I do some fishing and stuff. So it's really, really nice. So that video will be coming out next week, but I wanted to cap the video off by having the third and final clue for the outfits grand adventure hunt. So I'm gonna make this one relatively easy. So the treasure is buried at Madigan Camp 17, in the Simpson, Camp 17. It is buried at the base of the tree with a V. You should find that relatively easy. So go out there, grab the prize. This is the first one, so it will be so good if that prize gets grabbed pretty soon. And we will be doing another one very shortly. Cheers, guys. Thanks for your support. See you next time.